realistic to the time. Uh, now I would uh, ask Dhananjay uh, from CleanMax uh, to do his presentation and maybe even you can also stick to the time that we have held it on the performance. <laughs> Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Just uh, had Abhay's presentation. So he has mentioned about the manpower and the analytics and the software which is used. But uh, doing those definitely on the ground reality, uh, ground work has the first priority. Uh, as maintaining the practical uh, plants, model cleaning, or any preventive or other maintenance, those are important factor. So that if those are done and if the data is coming properly, then the analytics can be done. So uh, what are the best practice which, we, uh, which will minimize the problems and we'll get proper reports and uh, data coming from the side that I would like to cover in it. Some of these uh, slides of monitoring will be repeated what Abhay has given, but I will skip those. Those are a couple of slides which will be repeated. So basically Climax is the largest uh, rooftop developer with 85 megawatts on site. We operate, we install, uh, do commissioning and also maintain the plants. So those are uh, around and sell the power that is in the OPEX model. We have a high uh, skilled professional teams and entire vertical, a lot of them from the different organizations. Been awarded as an MNRE's best uh, reward for the rooftop. We operate in the different segments and a lot of uh, brands are uh, where actually the installations has been done. So the reason why I'm showing this is that on this rooftops, the safety aspect is the most important. We have to adhere with all the safety norms and do proper activities so that uh, the model cleaning and the maintenance work is carried out. So different segments, right from food, IT, automobile, other manufacturing and universities, we have the installations. The best practice first is, uh, as I mentioned, the, basically the install, uh, the work is done by the labors who are not that focused on the safety factor. Unless and until you always give them a proper training and keep on visual, ins uh, visual display if it is there on the site, then seeing it repeatedly whenever they do the activity, then it gets into their blood and they start implementing the safety. So this is what we have found out that visual if displays are maintained or the site, then the safety will be followed properly. The major challenge is the skylight on the roofs of all these industries. We have a natural light, uh, so the transparent sheets which are not able to take the weight of the human bodies. And while doing maintenance or cleaning, accidentally if someone puts steps, he is likely to fall down. So protecting those on the roof is an important factor. So we do a, a metal cover, metal uh, sheets, not a sheet basically, the uh, chicken mesh, so that any accidentally keeping a foot on the roof will avoid the fall down. Then is the second important, all the are sloping roofs, metal sheet or the RCC. So the person should have a protection if, uh, from skidding on the metal roof. So lifelines are the important aspect in all the installations. So that has to be followed by the other people also. That's the basically best practice what I want to mention. So hook it to the lifeline. Then on the metal sheet, when you walk, uh, periodically walking will hamper your metal sheet. So walkways has to be installed so that it will not damage the roofing sheets. When working on a uh, height, maybe a carport or a superstructure, Safety ladders which while climbing on should also have handrails and the standing platform so that cleaning activity will be uh, done seamlessly. When you have uh, don't have access to the industrial roof height of 15 meters, 12 meters, then you use a monkey ladder. So monkey ladders with the standing landing platform is also important so that the person gets down and hooks his safety harness on the lifeline. So that. Uh, activity needs some pre uh, landing platforms. With any type of ladder should have a handrails. Uh, all the installations for the inverters when we do a maintenance, the person has to stand in the sun, so sun shades has to be there. It is a dual protection for the a person who is working on the field and also protection to the inverter. 
cable routing aesthetic wise as well as your safety of the cables if it is properly laid in the cable trays it will uh, easy for the maintenance activity ferruling and uh, cable laying ferruling is for easy identification so that in future the string numbers uh, should be traceable which of the which are the strings has any issues that can be identified and inverter numbers again for the identification for the monitoring purpose on the port, uh, portal we have to see what inverters is uh, if any errors are there the monitoring person informs to the field that inverter number 5 has a certain error so he should be able to trace which inverter is on the field where he need to address it same way with the earthing pits uh, it should clearly have the name plate when was it done what is the purpose of that earthing pit what is the new next uh, due date and the earthing values fall arrestors uh, apart from uh, uh, fall arrestors is important uh, to have a lanyard with shock absorber so that if uh, something someone falls he will not go beyond 1 or 2 meters or instantly at that particular location he will get locked and the rows of the other components where uh, you have to use safety equipment so that accidents will be avoided for cleaning the modules and saving the waters uh, it is, this is a we use a brush with the nozzle where the water consumption is very less we are able to use less than 1 liter per module for every cleaning cycle those are again this uh, brushes have the carbon fiber cloth wound on it so by accident if any mc4 or any cable is open the person will not get the shock it is shock proof uh, thing Uh, in the ground mounted system uh, vegetation is a major factor uh, so need to have so proper ppes while operating the uh, grass cutting machines should be used these are the slides what uh, abhay also covered so we also have our uh, monitoring system that's the different components connected and a web based system we can monitor all the parameters some of them are almost 100 parameters we monitor each site we have a pc based interface and a smartphone application we can uh, go up to the string level monitoring automated alerts and reports uh, are been generated by the system for the events uh, standard operating procedure for tracking the system issues site issues uh, we can monitor the inverter performance inverter tripping power failure then after this if any errors are there then the system generate the tickets and those tickets are being given to the field technician to address it and then from that once the ticket is issued when the system actually it was resolved so we can track the entire uh, process how many time how much time it has taken whether it was in the defined time zone or the more time has been taken by the field person and finally this tickets are used for the uh, further analysis what were the uh, periodic events occurred what were the uh, flaws in the system so from that we can have a corrective actions in advance some of the plant photographs it's a basic g pune this is carport nasik tata motor sanand the installation this is bangalore airport manipal university jaipur nbc bearing jaipur asai glass chennai that's the basic thing so thank you thanks dhanjay uh may i request now colonel raguram uh, to make his brief presentation uh good afternoon everyone i am uh, raguram i am from ujas and uh, i just wanted to give a brief uh, very brief introduction to uh, my company the uh, considering the fact that this is the first post lunch session and uh, most importantly i wanted to cover uh, a very uh, important uh, aspect uh, which affects uh, uh, solar companies that is of net metering that i'll take on at the end of the uh, presentation so for the next 3 minutes very briefly i'll just uh, i would like to introduce my company to you uh we started our uh, solar uh, journey on uh, 2012 uh, with the first uh, 21 megawatt uh, plant in uh, rajgarh mp and uh, as on date uh, we have uh, installed nearly 269 megawatts as on date in the last 5 years and our operations extend from uttarakhand 
in the north to assam in the east and andamans in the south uh, we have very strong financials and uh, you know we are in the business for the long uh, run we were the first uh, some of our achievements we were the first company to install a megawatt level solar plant in mp and uh, the first solar plant to operate under rec uh, mechanism in the country we were the first to install a commercially owned uh, rooftop uh, with the bidirectional uh, metering and also we were the first to install a canal bank uh, solar project in uh, bengal Uh, some of the accolades that we have uh, received uh, needless to say we have uh, a number of them uh, prominent uh, amongst them being the ones with uh, from uh, business world and uh, forbes asia where uh, we have uh, been rated as the best uh, uh, amongst the uh, you know uh, 200 under billion uh, companies we are listed in the national stock exchange and uh, the uh, bombay St stock exchange as well with a chrysal uh, sp1a rating Uh, these are the uh, major divisions in our company uh, solar parks uh, which we started off in 2012 uh, 2014 we started the rooftop divisions that is the commercial uh, side uh, epc the next year and uh, very recently last year in feb we started the uh, the domestic uh, segment as well i just skip this uh, with the solar parks uh, we have had a very extensive uh, experience and uh, our main focus in our, in these parks being the ondm side we have a very strong ondm team and uh, the uh, you can see the average uh, cuf uh, in the order of 19 more than 19 uh, some of the major ones being rajgarh barod uh, recently in uh, diu aligarh uh, muslim university the epc as well uh, we have uh, had a very good uh, cuf of uh, more than 17 uh, the recent uh, installations uh, the major projects being with uh, hindustan aeronautics uh, this is the uh, inauguration of this uh, project and uh, the photo at the left uh, corner is the uh, project installation as far as uh, rooftop uh, segment is concerned this is one of the key focus areas for ujas energy and uh, by the end of uh, this financial year uh, we uh, we are likely to exceed uh, 26 megawatts in installation in uh, rooftops this includes both commercial as well as uh, residential uh, with the uh, home uh, segment uh, though we uh, aim to have a standardized kit but there are some instances like the one uh, at the right that is a customized uh, solution so uh, based on the requirement though uh, it's most uh, more economical for us to go in for a standardized kit uh, in case the customer uh, requirement is there we do uh, the customized uh, construction as well uh, these are some of the photographs of the uh, rooftops uh, in installations that we have done uh this is the uh, break up of the uh, business that we have had uh, with the majority being with the uh, universities schools and colleges and uh, the government buildings uh, significant uh, business has come from bsnl and uh, other uh, psus like uh, moil and uh, indian oil uh, as far as the uh, home segment is concerned uh, as on 5th january we have had uh, 961 installations these are 961 uh, dwellings so uh, in an, in a week or so we uh, this figure is going to cross 1000 uh, houses so that's a achievement for us uh, this is some of the fact sheets for uh, the uh, major installations that we have uh, done uh, 200 kilowatt in uh, noida like i said uh, earlier uh, our focus area is basically very strong ondm support so major part of our uh, employee strength uh, is in ondm so we aim to uh, you know ensure that post installation we uh, you know deliver what we have promised prior to installation so this is a snapshot of one of the customers after net metering this was done uh, last year 
the uh, this is the electricity bill and we still are managing the zero uh, billing so this uh, we take this as one of our achievements uh, OEM like i mentioned uh, focus area for us and uh, we use all the latest uh, technology that is available in terms of thermal imaging and uh, uh, you know all kinds of uh, proactive methods to uh, resolve problems uh, and the list goes on some of our uh, key customers indian oil ntpc bsnl being uh, major uh, customers for us uh, i would like just like to show you some more slides i thought uh, they would be possible i have time i'll just take a minute Uh, so this is the uh, issue that I wanted to flag today. Uh, this is the process uh, involved in getting a net metering uh, done. So this process varies from state to state and uh, most complicated and time consuming being uh, Madhya Pradesh. And this is the approximate amount of days which each uh, process, uh, we each step in the process takes. So if you analyze uh, this data, the Connecting uh, thing, the common factor in all these is wherever the uh, documents are going to the DISCOM official for uh, vetting or signature, there's a significant amount of uh, delay. Uh, recently, there was a uh, letter circulated by MNRE uh, asking for uh, suggestions from uh, the stakeholders in what the process should be as far as, uh, you know, this entire uh, uh, right from NOC to subsidy, claiming subsidy is concerned. So in our uh, view, uh, the uh, uh, system being followed by Gujarat, uh, GEDA, we find it to be the most efficient as far as the uh, process online is concerned. Though the there is still uh, delay in Gujarat as well as far as uh, uh, subsidy and net metering is concerned, but however the system is quite uh, streamlined. Uh, the only uh, suggestion being that Gujarat doesn't give the uh, flexibility to the uh, uh, companies to uh, buy their own uh, net meter in case the discom is not being uh, uh, is not able to provide it in time. So in case they pr uh, provide us with this uh, leeway, then I think uh, it would actually benefit the customers to a great extent because we would be able to then finish the installation and uh, ensure the net metering is also done and charge the solar plant of the customers within a week, uh, maximum of one week's time. Right now, I think it takes uh, uh, around a month to month and a half at uh, in the best case uh, scenario. Uh, so this is uh, food for thought and uh, I would request all uh, the uh, people here to just, uh, in case uh, you're able to voice your opinion on this issue at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thanks, Colonel. Sunny afternoon, everybody. And uh, I think so our session was more related to EPC and operation and maintenance. But as of now, most of my panelists have spoken more about uh, operation and maintenance, performance management, asset management. So maybe I'll just highlight about the issues uh, related to the EPC side. Uh, of the business actually, as well as the developer side of the business also. Uh, my name is Amit Barve, been associated with the solar industry for last 14 years. Uh, started my career uh, in solar industry when it was very nascent stage. Uh, coming all the way for 14 years, I still wonder whether it's a time to smile or it's st still time to see that uh, why do I join this industry because there are always a mixed feeling. The, day, uh, the years when I started uh, working in an industry, it was a very small, uh, more off-grid centered, and uh, there was no scaling up of the business's concern. We used to sell the systems in few kilowatts actually, and that was a big thing if you sell something in kilowatts, and the average price at what we were selling was like 350 rupees per watt peak as a system price, 250 rupees per watt peak was the module price, and it was more of a seller's market. Uh, if you are able to afford, you have it, or there is nothing for you. Yeah, today the situation has changed, uh, we don't need any further efforts to go to the industry and try to convince them why solar works, how solar works, 
and why today it is economically feasible uh, to adapt to the solar solution. So there are a couple of good things which are happening in the industry. Uh, the really sector has moved ahead. We know by now uh, the installation base has gone close to 12 gigawatt, uh, which is a huge, huge chunk than what we were talking about kilowatts in installations till early 1990 or even early 2000 before the National Solar Mission started into the picture. Uh, over the period of last three to four years, uh, government has also recognized a lot of issues in terms of scaling up of the business is concerned. The major business what has been done or the installation base has happened is onto the ground mounted systems and land acquisition was the major pain as far as developers were concerned and there the government chipped in with the help of coming with the concept of solar park so that the pain points related to the developers are really taken over by the government and the developer really can have a level playing field when they compete against each other and make the project with a viable team. Also the effect of the scaling up has led to a tariff war to an extent or even the, as the volumes have been increasing, the tariffs have reduced drastically. Today what has happened is the grid parity has reached almost in most of the states as far as uh, ground mounted systems are concerned with the larger scales of or the volumes which have been built up. Uh, even if you see the uh, industrial sites or the commercial uh, places, the tariffs as well as the grid parity has reached almost all the states. So adapting solar uh, is no more something different. Uh, there is an economic feasibility. There are multiple reasons why somebody should invest. The business models have also changed. Today companies have come where they can ready to invest. Even the user need not invest money into it. And that is also another pain point which has been taken over to hedge the technology risk rather than upfront investing and then trying to adjust the result and see that my savings are acquisite to whatever the internal returns I'm promising to my management. Tomorrow somebody is ready to take the risk, take over the plant, invest into it and only sell you the energy. That is wonderful thing. But over and above, if you see the way Indian sector is moving, uh, also it creates a lot of question mark today with the, the kind of uh, tariff war which is happening. How many of the companies will be really able to sustain this kind of tariff war? How long we can continue bidding at a low prices? And when we bid for such a low prices, what kind of quality will be maintained while I do the installation? And whether this, this issues can get sorted out in the near future is a big challenge for all of us to see how we move forward. This really puts a question mark on sustainability because today we have a huge uh, goal to achieve more than 100 gigawatt but even within first 12 to 15 gigawatt we are trying to we are almost at the place where we are losing the momentum because of the aggressive bidding. The predictability of installation is going down. The rate at which the tenders come and go like six months there is nothing and suddenly in the spurt of moment there are four to five big tenders where there is a huge rush for everybody to pick up the projects whichever are available. So these are really creating a question marks on sustainability. The reason of rooftop growing up is also because of the tariff in most of the states where rooftop today is becoming an attractive proposition. But there are also multiple limitations and challenges like what even Mr. Colonel uh, mentioned about it. Net metering is the biggest challenge in most of the states. The good part is that most of the states have a policy now in place which was not there two years back. Uh, but the policy also has several limitations. You are not allowed to go beyond a megawatt and most of the industries would like to adopt the net metering so that on the week or weekend days or the days when they don't work, they don't want to lose onto the energy which is being generated and they should be able to bank it with the net metering. But the moment net metering comes into the picture, the size gets limited to a megawatt uh, that severely puts the restriction. Take a case in place like Pune with so much amount of industrial belt in and around, even if you just look around the size of the roofs of these industries, average there are a couple of industries who can take five to six megawatt because of the size of the industry, the size of their roof and the type of the connections what they have. But the limitation is because of the net metering, they cannot go beyond that. The average time taken for approvals on the net metering in various states is ranges between anything between three months to six months. And the customer has to wait for till that time putting it into a possibility that he will keep losing the generation the day his loads are less, losing the generation the days uh, he is not operating at all. So sustainability is a, definitely a question. All the time pressure, price pressure is really also taking a toll onto the quality. And today a couple of brown assets of we see and analyze, uh, probably Abhay and Dhananjay and many of them are seeing into the industry. 
the standards at which the plants are getting built up are uh, definitely a question mark. And when we are looking at a life of such a plants to sustain for 25 years, uh, the quality is the most important thing, no doubt about it. And any compromise on that is going to be a problem in terms of generation in coming years and as well as denting the confidence of the investors, which may not be very good for the sector to prosper in coming years. Most important, I think, so all our panelists spoke about services and that is the most important part because the work half is done only when you install or engineer a good system, design a good system and install with the good components. But in case if you are unable to take care of the system for next 25 years, you are not going to get the expected results. And services is the most important but widely neglected portion in India actually. And they can see if you move around the country, majority of the plants are in the problem because they are not serviced regularly. You can see unclean panels, you can see the cables dangling all over the places. We don't know at what efficiency these plants are really operating. Unfortunately or fortunately, we had a couple of chances to do the asset, uh, I would say study of a couple of plants uh, as a due diligence for some of the private equity firms. And we were surprised to see the results, the degradations of the modules, the quality of the workmanship and the plant performances are really creating a scary picture and I hope it doesn't lead to another NPAs uh, like what we have seen it in the coal industry. So that's all from my side as far as topic is concerned. Just to give you brief about uh, my company, Enapark. Uh, we are headquartered in Hamburg, a German company involved into the business of uh, solar IPP as the major business. We also do EPC as well as an asset management. We are the second largest investor for solar in Europe. Uh, active in 20 different odd countries and done more than 265 projects worldwide. Uh, overall our size, we have done a 2 gigawatt of grid connections only on solar. Out of that 1.1 gigawatt are our own assets. We are operating 1.4 gigawatt which means 300 megawatt assets are being operated for the third party uh, outside our own asset base. Uh, in India, we have started three years back, uh, slightly more than three years back. Uh, we have done 67 megawatt of installations by now. These are the name of some of the marquee customers. The good point to know that today when I'm talking to you in Pune, I have already four customers who have uh, adopted our solution. Uh, key customers like Atlas Copco, uh, Rene Shaw, Kaiser Compressor, as well as Aremo. Uh, all of these are industrial rooftop installations in the range of 500 kilowatt to a megawatt. That's all from my side and uh, I would request Brinder to say a few words before we go on to the question and answer session. Yeah.